Hi everyone! Today I'm going to work on a dress shirt pattern. Like the image shown here, it is a design with buttons and a placket. In this exercise you will import a pattern and an avatar and then place the patterns around the avatar before the sewing. I'll just work in order so you can follow me step by step. First I'll show the files that I added in the library and then we can start placing it around the avatar. So your folder within the library, you can see it here. Just connected it and can double click on it. So I can load the DXF pattern file to work on today. And the avatar to use is also in the avatar folder in the library. I will bring up the version to female avatar in order to arrange the patterns nicely around it. So this is what I'm going to do next. We need to organize the patterns first, set the front panel to fit the front panel based on the avatar shadow. Next the sleeve pattern. I'll also arrange then the back seam patterns in order before I'm going to start with a simple sewing. For this I'm going to select the segment sewing tool, which would be shortcut N. I just start connecting my side seams, pay attention to my sewing direction, then I connect the shoulder seams and I also can sew the sleeves along the side straight away and connect the sewing line between the yoke and the body on the back seam. Now we are going to sew the sleeve armhole. We will connect the back seams, first aligning them as a standard. So based on these two notches, align the notch to the sewing line and sew. When the notch is enlarged, it is cut in short proportions, so pay attention and do not miss this part. And of course I'm going to sew by aligning the direction of the sewing line. Now the upper part, just like this. And it's a two-piece connection. So in this case the tool you're currently using can't be used as it is. So press the segment sewing firmly, change it to M to N segment sewing. I'll press the tool and change it to M to N. First of all, set the sewing line of the segment to be N. When you have all sewing lines set for M, press Enter on the keyboard. Then click on the segment which you want to be N. And likewise, when you completed the N sewing line, press Enter on your keyboard. The same applies for the next step. The next part from the shoulder seams towards the front. Again, since this is a job that requires sewing one-to-one, -one, likewise it cannot be used only with the segment sewing tool. This time it's not an M to N but a segment sewing tool. So let's learn how to sew one by one using a shortcut key. When changing the tool again, select the tool, hold it down and switch to the segment sewing tool. And then first set the sewing line at the position to be the one sewing line where shorter parts will get connected to. After setting one sewing line by clicking at it, so come and move the cursor. Also if you press the shift key on the keyboard the color of the sewing line will change to a fluorescent color. And then connect this sewing line with all according ones on your armhole. Just in line with the sewing machine notch and make a connection as when sewing. If you let go of shift, you can complete one or more sewing. In the case of many to many, you have to switch to the M to N sewing tool to work. In case of one to many, you don't have to change tools. Then the armhole is also aligned with the seam line. You can connect according to the notch. So now I'm going to sew the neck. 
fit the center part on the back panel, connect them side by side. When I connect the rest of the front again, the position that becomes one like this. And here you can see that the front neckline is broken by many points. So in this case, first I click on the position of the sewing line one to set it. Hold shift and then move to the front. By setting the sewing line, you can easily manage one to many and connect then the remaining neck pattern on the back. Now let's work on the sleeves. So first look inside the sleeve body. As a baseline, there is information about the design of this pattern. So the baseline is the purple light colored line in the pattern, not a line that can work on patterns separately. So just think of it as if it were painted. And to work with this line, you have to select the trace tool, which would be shortcut I, because you need to change this line into an internal line so you can work on the pattern. To convert baselines into internal lines, use the trace tool shortcut I. I'm going to use this tool to select the lines I want to make into the internal lines that I can use. I can just select multiple lines all at once by pressing down shift. And once I have selected them all, I press enter on my keyboard so they will turn automatically into internal lines. Another option that I have could be also selecting more also here on this placket. So I select again multiple baselines also here on the sleeve and on the placket. And then I right mouse click so I get this drop down menu and can here select trace as internal line or shape. First, I'm going to make this tuck here in the sleeve. Here it's shown what amount is folded into the baseline now. The direction in which it folds is well marked. So in this amount that folds over there, I need to cut off the midpoint. So now if you change the tool to edit pattern and make a selection, you will see that the outline of the pattern is connected all the way around, just like this. This is because it's not separated by a straight point. In this case, you can then use the internal lines. With their help, you can create the point that cuts the segment exactly in the middle. So select both ends of the internal lines that intersect with the pattern outline, right click on the mouse. And here you can select the menu to extend, trim and add points to the outline of the pattern. If you select the menu there, it will also add a point at this location at the end of the internal line. So if you check the pattern outline, you will see it's divided in multiple segments. So you can now draw another line at the midpoint on this line. So we need to make a fold line between the two marked ones. And in order to do this, to break down the point in the middle of the segment here, I'll select the add point tool at the top going to select that tool, could also use shortcut X. And if you right click on the line segment, the split line window appears. So you select the bottom menu here, divide the quantity into two pieces. If you click OK, it's calculated into two segments with the same length because the point will break it in the middle. And now I change the tool to internal polygon line tool, shortcut G. So if you click on the point you took and double click on the line segment in the end, you can easily create an internal line in the middle that you can fold later on. Next, I'm going to put the folded angle along the direction of the baselines here. I'll quickly resize the window. Then the pleats fold tool will appear here on the top right. So select this tool and create an arrow in the direction of the baselines on your pattern. 
just like this. Click once to start the position and then move the mouse cursor like this to the right. There is an arrow that gives you a preview of your direction of your future fold angles. So I'll include all the internal lines and double click. Then my design is knife pleats. Here is a menu called number of internal lines per pleats. That lets me decide how many internal lines will fit in one pleat. It can also be displayed. And since I drew three lines, I now have to select three for this menu. Below you can set how smooth each fold is. So usually zero and 360 degrees are selected. You can also choose an angle that is less flat, of course. And once I'm done with the folding angle, I'll just sew the tuck below. I will now change the tool to the free sewing tool. The fall angle here is on zero degrees, which is shown in red, and we are going to create a seam line where the red line is. At this time, the amount of pleats is not marked in the direction going to the left. So first, create a sewing line where you know the length. So here I create the sewing line from one side towards the middle line. And after that, I will get the blue dot so I know how long I have to sew that piece down here towards the left. When sewing one tuck like this, the mount is based on this zero degree. So you just have to work so that the two sewing lines face each other and take the 360 degree lines as a reference. If you set two sewing lines like this so that the notch faces each other as much as the amount, sewing for one tuck is then completed. And since all the sewing lines just made are sewing lines where the pattern and the pattern overlap, I'll use the edit sewing tool to edit the sewing line. So you can use the edit sewing tool, also shortcut B, select all the sewing lines you just set up and set the sewing line type to turned. You can find this function in the property editor and you need to change the part to turned. If you don't do this, it may be recognized as a seam that just sticks side by side. In that case, this tuck will not stick flat and the part where the sewing line is connected will float flat. The sewing line that needs to be pressed flat on top of the pattern is exactly where the pattern overlaps. I always select this with the edit sewing tool and change the sewing line type just like this to turned. Then this time I'll work on attaching the placket on the right side. So if you take a look at the cuff pattern on this sleeve, this cuff has two buttons, a button and a buttonhole. You can also see the location marked. So because the button and buttonhole are locked and overlapped, there must be a location where this pattern is open, but it can overlap. Just like you can see here with these scissors. So there is a baseline marked on, but I will create a separate internal line that doesn't go just until the very top of this marking. So I select the internal polygon line tool starting from the top where it opens up by clicking once. Then I'll go straight down the baseline and double click on the outside of the pattern. And then I change the tool to edit pattern right mouse click on the internal line and then you can select cut from the menu. So then this line is not connected to the outside of the pattern but it ends in the middle. Now I will try to sew the overlapping placket in here. I will do so with changing to the segment sewing tool. So first I will sew the placket from the outline. Just connect the notch to the sewing line so that the shape is exactly the same. So now 
if the entire line is connected to the right side, the meaning of creating a slit will disappear. So I turn the tool into a free sewing tool, then start my sewing line and will only sew to the position and set the length by matching the blue points. There is one more location where this placket is sewn, which is at the hem. So if the hem is connected all the way, it won't work to create a slit here. So when I sew this placket onto my actual sleeve pattern, I just need to make sure I connect only the part until the pattern cuts open. Also, I do this again with the free sewing tool where I get the length first that I can use then here on my little placket pack pattern and connect the sewing line only until the blue dot. Also, this pattern will later on be superimposed. So that means it will lay on top of the sleeve pattern, which means I make sure I select all my sewing lines and make sure the sewing line type here again is set to turned, which will just ensure my little placket pattern will just lay flat on that sleeve pattern. Just quickly again, I'm in my edit sewing tool. I make sure I have the right sewing line selected that will lay on top of each other later on. Go to my property editor and set it to turned. In the next step, I will connect my placket with my sleeve, also the internal lines as you can see here. And these ones are easy because they go just simply on top of each other. And this one long line here that you can see, which will also ensure that the slit will close. I will use the one to M sewing that we have so seen before with pressing shift and attaching two short lines to one long sewing line. The right side of this little placket I will leave open because later on this will be the end and also opening of the cuff at the same time. So in the next step I can focus on sewing the cuff onto the actual sleeve pattern. This is going to be a one to many seam because it's connected to this position all the way. And from the location where the slit is located, I will connect all the way except the overlapping sewing line, just like here. So you can see how I'm leaving out the tuck because this is the amount of fabric that will fold under. The next part, the remaining amount of the cuff, will then meet at the side seam of the sleeve and return from the right side here, just like that. I'll draw this in orange so you can see it better. So to sew this on, I will use the free sewing tool, shortcut M. And then I start by clicking on the outer line until the first notch, finish the line with the left click. And what you can see marked here is in form of a baseline, the position of the buttonhole, which will always be on top when you close the cuff of a sleeve. So this is why I will start the connection now, sewing the cuff on. And the first bit I have to attach is the little placket. Now I need to press shift to connect many sewing lines to one, just like we did before on the sleeve. And then I will start here with the internal line marked for the position of the placket until the first line that marks the position of the tuck. Then I will leave out again, as I already mentioned, that amount of the tuck which will fold under continue at the third line which marks the last fold of my pleat and so until the side seam of my sleeve. As soon as I finished my sewing line I let go shift so the connection has been made and then I connect the remaining part of the cuff which will get sewn on to the right side of that sleeve pattern just like that with the free sewing tool as it's only one connection, no need to press shift here. And I finish with one click at the blue dot where my sleeve seam ends.
The rest of that sleeve I will finish later once I have arranged and placed it around my avatar. And also in case I find that the library window here is narrowing down my view on my 3D space, I can now either click on top of that library window to close that temporarily or I press shortcut Y. And now I will just start with the arrangement. Here I can use the transform pattern tool to also refine the arrangement in my 2D pattern window even a little bit more. And if I want to reflect my layout of my 2D pattern window onto my 3D window, I'll just press the button reset 2D arrangement all. As soon as I press that, you can see how it's reflecting perfectly the arrangement on my 3D window, which I have on my 2D window. And to get better view on the avatar, I press Ctrl A to select all patterns, move them at the side and turn on the arrangement points. I can find them either in a toggle bar or with Shift F. And now I can start placing my patterns by selecting one by clicking on it and then then I press on the arrangement point where I get the perfect preview for it and like this I place piece after piece. Here I'm adjusting the layout of my little placket pattern to my sleeve a little bit with my gizmo and then place both of them around the arm of my avatar. If you place it like this, it won't be easy to select the arrangement point on the wrist. So if you go down the menu on the bottom to the property window as it is, the arrangement properties are shown. So I'm going to adjust position Y here, then select the cuff pattern and click the arrangement point on the wrist to place it correctly. Then I press 8 on my keyboard to see the back view of the avatar. Here I can select the back panel patterns all at once and click on the arrangement point on the other half. At this time the rear center is more deviated from the center of the arrangement points. So again in the properties window you can adjust position X to move it a bit towards the avatar. I'll push it a bit around. And as a last step, I'll place the color stand and the color pattern by clicking the arrangement point next to the avatar's neck. The remaining space is also among the arrangement points on the back of the avatar. So I'm going to pick the color and click on an arrangement point that's a little bit more outside, just like this. When placing the center of the selected pattern, it will be positioned at the clicked arrangement point. So therefore at this time it's a half pattern and again I adjust the position X in the properties window by turning this collar a little bit around the neck. Once you have finished using the arrangement points, you can turn off the view again and then continue with working on the shirt pattern. I'm going to put the gusset attached to the side of the pattern here. The notch is well marked so you can use it and I'm going to make an internal line to sew it on the inside here. So if I select it with the edit pattern tool on the first notch position like this, the point is well divided but the second one is not which I can see because the whole line is selected. And in this case, you can use the notch tool to make a straight line of the pattern. So you select the notch tool and use it by right clicking on the notch. There is a menu. So select the notch tool, right click on the notch here and then select add point to notch. And if you select this on the pattern, you can just add straight points everywhere you want to. There is also no point for a lower notch on the front. So likewise, I select the add point to notch, select the edit pattern tool again. And now I'm going to make an internal line from the new segment that I have created here. So here I have to see how far do I have to place this internal line, which I can't know yet. So I'll check the number the length of the top part of my gusset pattern. And as I only need half here, I'll enter half the value for the internal line. So I right click on the newly created segment, select the menu called offset as internal line, 
And then once this info window puts up, I put in a distance of six millimeters. And important if extended is checked, since the pattern extends beyond the length of the segment line, I will uncheck the extend. The same goes for the front panel. So also here I will right click to set the internal line to be six millimeters distance from the pattern outline and then click OK. The upper part of the gusset will also be sewn. So this time I select the internal polygon line tool. I click to start the straight line point based on the point at the top and then double click to finish. The same goes for the other side. And then I can start sewing the gusset on. Here I change to the segment sewing tool. Also here I will use the one to many sewing. So I pay attention, my sewing line notch is facing to the left, which means I need to start at the front. Press shift, attach the first top part of the gusset and then also the one at the back, let go of shift and have it connected. The sides of the gusset I can simply attach by one click on each segment and then this one is sewn on. So before I continue with the sleeves here, I will just finish the arrangement of the little gusset that we have just sewn. And you can do this in the 3D window by just simply clicking on the pattern here. So here I'm picking the transform pattern tool, then I click in the 3D window on the pattern and set it to superimpose under, which will help me to place that little pattern exactly underneath the sewing line where it belongs to. Then next we can take a look at the sleeve. And also if you want to control your views in 3D window, you can always press on a pattern, then click F on your keyboard and then you can zoom in directly on that point that you have clicked on. Then first adjust the position X of your cuff in the property editor. So here you can directly go to the properties editor and adjust position X. I'll adjust it according to the seam line so it matches where my slit opens. And if you confirm this with the picking point coming out from the position you just clicked, the click part is where the buttonhole is created. That is when it's wrapped, it should rise more outward. So looking at the enclosed direction, this part is more inward. And in this case, right clicking the pattern flip wrap direction, you can flip the wrap direction. And to make it more locked, I'll adjust the spacing in the layout in the properties window. And I want to reposition it. And I'll make a button and a buttonhole here. So I select the button tool at the top of the 3D window, then click at the intersection of the two baselines where only the button is located. And after selecting the buttonhole tool, I will do the same. I click at the intersection point on the other side to create a buttonhole. The connection between button and buttonhole can be made by using the lock tool right on the top right of this menu. So if you select the button first, then the buttonhole, you can set them to be locked. That also is shown with a little lock on top of it. And now we continue to work on the front panel. So the front placket has a proportion that folds inward like this. To be able to fold this placket, I need to convert the baselines into internal lines. First the one where I want to fold the placket and also the one where I want to attach it to, to sew it on the inside. So I press shift and select both of them at once, just like this. First the middle one and then the one where I want to sew it on. Then I press enter on my keyboard and have both of them connected into internal lines both at once. So this pattern will get folded into the shape by selecting the fold arrangement tool up here. Then I click on the internal line in the middle which I have just created. I can use my gizmo and then click and drag that fold around so the placket folds on the inside. We only need to fold it in so it's flat enough but make sure it's not pointing outside. 
and you can also here by adjusting in the U check where they overlap and because these two lines overlap each other you can sew it just like when sewing pleats. This one we will sew by using the free sewing tool based on the fold line. I'll sew the same amount on both sides. Also the same position at the hem. And because it has been folded already, the outer pattern line will meet the internal line just like this. I'll connect them as well here. All the sewing we just did is overlapping sewing. So at this time when sewing on the internal line, the sewing line type is automatically turned. And then you select only the two sewing lines sewn together with the edit sewing tool on the top and the hem and change the sewing line type to turned here. Now in this state I'll first create a symmetrical pattern. So I select the transform pattern tool and just draw a big box over my complete pattern or use the shortcut Control A and then I right click select the menu called symmetric pattern with sewing. I'll get the yellow ghost that I can just position next to my pattern pieces in the 2D window by just simply clicking it and press shift. So shift helps to organize it horizontally and as soon as I clicked I get a symmetric copy on the other side that now I need to just adjust slightly in the position with the help of my gizmo in the 3D window. I'll move it horizontally so that it fits and in this case you just need to look at the position of the sleeves rather than the placket. The back panel will be arranged in the pattern window so that the back panels can face each other and I can now complete the center back sewing. I'll connect all the back panels center side by side using the segment sewing tool by simply clicking. Then I'll tidy up my front panel by changing to the select move tool because when worn the buttonhole is located on the outside. That means in women's wear it's on the right side of the avatar. On screen you see now the pattern is on the left and it will have to be more on the surface. So I click this pattern, pull it slightly out with the gizmo to the front and I also put it a bit more to the center to put the placket position on top of each other because when the buttons will be locked the simulation can be done correctly. I'll now create a button and a buttonhole choosing the button tool. I'll make a button with this pattern on the inside. So I click on the intersection of the baseline to make a button. You can also click on the bottom to make it and then you can easily copy and paste at once after changing the tool to the select move button tool. Click the first button and use the copy shortcut Control C. And then if you press Control V, a button to paste on the mouse cursor will follow. Now you can zoom in, choose the right position and right mouse click because then this pop-up window appears and the first button you clicked on the first time will give you the position. You can define the interval between the following buttons and also the number of buttons that you want to create in total. I'll put in to create four more. And now the gap between the first and the second button is replicated along this placket. Then I'll make a buttonhole in the symmetrical position. So you can copy and paste using the buttonhole tool in the same way. There's but also an easier way to do it when there's a symmetrical pattern. So if you select the created buttons all at once and then right click on them, you get this menu and you can select duplicate as buttonhole to symmetric pattern. That's why I paste it with a buttonhole instead of a button in a symmetrical pattern. 
So the baseline position is the same and the position is also well aligned to the center of the placket. If you lock it here, it will be completed, but there is one more task that needs to be done. So the front placket is double layered with a folded position. So in this case, it will be the same like in reality, but whether it's a button or a buttonhole, when there is an overlapping pattern, it should be stick together so you can do the same in Clow. Likewise with the select move tool we can use it to select both buttons and buttonholes all at once. Right mouse click on the selected items and then set number of sewing layers and we can set the number of patterns to pierce together as two press enter so the centering is based on the overlapped position in 3D it will be an indication of where it will be pierced with and then it is complete now you can click and drag with the lock tool to select all buttons at once click on all buttonhole positions to lock all buttons with buttonholes properly and then this is completed Let's change the tool back to the select move tool and then run the simulation. You can also hit the space bar to simulate. And as the base of this process is completed, we can now take a look in adjusting a shirt in the simulation and enhancing the quality in our garment. First I'll check if there are any parts of the sleeve or placket that are not properly. Before this, I finished the locking sleeve up to the side, but I didn't do the other side. In this case, you will need to correct it again. And the gusset also needs some modification. So stop the simulation. Simply press Ctrl Z on the keyboard to go back to the previous work. And then select the button lock tool and lock up the according button and buttonhole and then re-simulate. Also checking in on the little gusset now here, just like rotating around and looking it up here. It seems to be okay on this side, but still a bit missimulated on the other side. So you can stop the simulation again. And in the stop state, you can then just use the gizmo again to put the little gusset a bit more inside, simulate again. And with the use of this, off and on simulation, you can easily fix some minor simulation mistakes. The other part seems to be well fitted, also the placket, so I'll try to close up the collar stand button of the neck pattern here. In this case, I will close it using the pin function with the select move tool. I can then just click on the pattern by holding down W on the keyboard and a pin is simply created like this. I click on this pin to make sure it's inward. A button will then later be created in this location and then I take the other side and drag it a bit more to the right. Press the space bar to stop the simulation. So now you can easily create a button on the side where the pin was created. Select the button create one by clicking on the placement on the color stand here and then do the same for the buttonhole. Select the buttonhole tool and place it right where the position on the other side of the color stand is. Then just lock button and buttonhole again by picking the lock tool. And before we can simulate, we need to do one more thing because it's important to remove that little pin. So select move tool on the 3D window, right mouse click on the pin, and then you can say delete selected pin because otherwise the button simulation will get stuck where the pin is. So now I press simulate and now I have a smooth simulation. So now I will modify the buttons and the buttonholes a bit. I'm going to modify the button and buttonhole items. If you look at this baseline shape, you will see that the button you created is much larger than the baseline. So in this case, after selecting the button tab in the object browser, there is a default button 
and you can adjust the width on the button properties in the property editor for this exact eight item. I entered about 10 randomly, so it came out a bit similar. If you want to do it correctly, this internal line segment, make the baseline an internal line and check the length or just keep going like this. You can change the distance and find the same size of the marking if you want to. Then I'll fix the buttonhole. Also here, I think I have to change the direction first before adjusting the size. So the buttonholes are created basically always horizontally. Here it seemed to be a vertical line. So after selecting all the buttonholes with the select move tool, I can change the angle of it in the property editor. Since it's laying horizontally, I will enter an angle of 90 degrees to get a vertical state. In this state, select the buttonhole tab and click the default buttonhole item. Then just like before, you can adjust the size. Here I'm entering a little bit of lower value. And now that seems much more fitting already. The size has been adjusted similarly. So you can adjust the angle on the collar stand here for the buttonhole, just like you did before. And as a next thing, we can then take care of the whole collar and collar stand. So first step, I will change the tools again to the select move tool shortcut Q in my 3D window. Here I'm clicking on both collar patterns and right mouse click to strengthen them. I can also use the shortcut Ctrl H then simulate and this will make your collar standing up more stiff. Stop the simulation again. And with the edit pattern tool, I select the pattern outline and create an according internal line that reflects the same shape of the selected pattern outline. Right mouse click, offset as internal line. And then I get a pop-up window where I enter a low distance, just like here, for example, six millimeters that I can use to arrange a smooth fold. To achieve a smooth fold, we will again use the fold arrangement tool in our 3D menu. By choosing the fold arrangement tool, I can then click on the new created internal line and just simply fold my shirt collar downwards toward my garment and then simulate. Now the folded shape is nice and completed and in order to continue my work, I will also first do some tidying up again. In this case, I will set my avatar into a clear position. So I click on my library window or open it by shortcut Y, go into my avatar menu. The corresponding folder for this will be within the avatar folder for the version two female avatar and then pose. And you just have to choose the pose carefully. If you want to see a larger thumbnail, can also click on the icon view here to get a bigger preview. Then I'll double click on the correct pose here and wait until it has finished the simulation. Simulate again for a perfect finish and then I will combine the work that has been divided in two parts on my back panel patterns here. Similar when using the edit pattern tool, if you want to right click on the line where you want to merge, you can just choose the menu and say merge for the pattern and the patterns that were divided into two will merge into one. Because there is no separate line in the back yoke, I'm going to combine only the line segment with the other segment line here on the color stand. Then I continue with the lower back panel and then I go to the 3D window, change the tool back to the select move tool, simulate once again. 
also here I can pull a bit on my sides to make the fit looking nice and correct. Then I stop the simulation. Now I'm going to align the shoulder position of this shirt according to the back panel of my back yoke pattern. You can see the shoulder position here marked on as a baseline according also to the notch on the outside. I use the trace tool shortcut I, press enter to transfer it into an internal line so I can use it. Then I press 5 on my keyboard so I get the bird view on my avatar. So I can basically look at my avatar's hat. And if you increase the size of the 3D window here, you also can get a better view on your menu bar. Here you can find the avatar related tape tool. So I will choose the linear avatar tape. You can think of it as a linear line that you can mark the position on your avatar where your garment should be positioned and then attach it accordingly. So you can draw the line by clicking once and double click to finish it on the shoulder. Repeat that process on the other side. And in the next step we have to attach the internal line on our garment on the shirt back pattern to the line on the avatar with the attached to avatar tape. So here the tool is in our 3D menu bar. You can then first of all click on the internal line on the back yoke pattern and then you can see how it gets transparent in the 3D window and you can simply click on the linear tape that you have just created. If you then do the simulation again, the position will stick to that avatar tape here on the shoulder and the position of the whole shirt will be more balanced out according to the pattern indication that you got. It still looks a bit pointy so then click the edit avatar tape tool again and now you can immediately remove these tapes again and when the simulation is on you can see how the drape just falls down more naturally than also change back to the select move tool, turn around to check if your fit looks nice. So now that I have the shoulder position corrected, I'll try to improve the final finish and I can directly detect that that little gusset hasn't been simulated properly. So I stop the simulation, use my gizmo to pull it a bit more inwards of my pattern, simulate again and like this I have easily corrected the little mistake. Coming to the end I'm going to use the high resolution garment tool at the top of the 3D window, getting this input window here and by reducing the particle distance and particle spacing so the additional thickness collision between the garment, the mesh will become more dense for a nice simulation. The drape will be more natural and also in that state the thickness of the collision is lowered. We will also lower the avatar skin offset to zero so the spacing between the garment and the avatar becomes more natural. If you change the simulation quality to fitting and then press OK, the complete garment simulates more accurate and also more realistically. This needs a second to calculate. This is also properties that also can be all changed by clicking on one pattern piece after another. Then the simulation tool changes to the fitting state by the arrows also turning red. And if you run it again now, it will, yeah, as mentioned, look more realistic. Click again to stop the simulation. And for the fine tuning, I want to give the color and the color stand a little bit more stiffness. So I select transform pattern and both my color patterns here. Then I move on to the property editor and here I can directly go to the drop down menu for Bond Skive. Click on the little arrow on the left. So the drop down menu opens up and then I tick on the box for Bond just like this. So both my patterns turn orange immediately, which means the fusing or bonding now is applied. And if we take a look at the folded line on the color here that we made before to actually fold it down, we can see that it's still very sharp. And in order to make this look more soft, we can choose the edit pattern tool, go to the pattern, choose the line, 
the internal line directly and then here tick off the option for fold rendering. So if we then simulate again, we can see how that fold just drapes down more naturally again and simply looks more realistic. Next step to also get a nicer view of my whole completed garment, I want to then change the view of my garment here in the little toggle bar for the garment view. I will turn off the internal lines and then as soon as I turn around, I can only see the fold here better as well. Also internal lines everywhere else have disappeared. And now as soon as I click on that fold line again with edit pattern, I can even adjust the fold angle to not be as sharp and to drape a bit softer. Then I will simulate again. and see what kind of a difference it makes for my outcome in the end. That's a little fine tuning here. So whatever gives me the result that I'm aiming for. So once the simulation has been completed, I press the simulation tool again to turn it off. So now when you look at the whole outfit, turn it around in the view menu, like the internal line, I can also turn off the baseline view. So to get an even cleaner view of my whole garment, I can also turn off the trim view so I won't see my bond or fusing here. So the orange will disappear. And lastly, the clothes now have a texture view that separates the outer and the inner surfaces. So if you change this one to look at the thick texture surface, you can see the original color on the outside and the inside and the thickness of the clothes can be seen as well. So if I take a look at the whole garment now, I like the dress shirt that I have completed up to this date. And I hope you enjoyed the session. There's more videos in this intermediate course and see you next time.